Hi everyone, welcome to this first video on cognitive explanations of crime. Um, what we're going to be looking at in the first set of videos is something called social cognitive theory. Um, now this is a uh, essentially a, a stage-based process that understands or helps us to understand how people make decisions in a social way but using their cognitive faculties. So social cognitive theory essentially um, enables us to understand how people make sense of themselves, of other people, and the social world around them. So for example, social cognitive theory asks questions like how do we perceive ourselves and others? Do we have particular implicit theories about ourselves or about other people that might guide the way that we interact with them, the way that we process information within that social environment? Um, how do we interpret the meanings of other people's behaviour? So again, this is kind of going back to our ideas of maybe mental scripts and do we infer different attributions or different mental states based on um, specific behaviours that are enacted by other people. Um, how do we generate possible solutions to problems and then how do we choose from those possible solutions which one is the most appropriate one for the situation that we're in. So again all of these are driven by uh, maybe schemas about the social world, about our um, sense of self, about our attributions that we make about other people um, and these are all rooted typically in unconscious cognitive processes. So social cognitive theory is a tripartite model and what that means is that it assumes that social cognition is based around three key constructs. The first one is cognitive structures and these are our core beliefs. So these are implicit theories or implicit attitudes um, that we hold about ourselves and about other people. So how do we think about ourselves and about other people from a kind of non-conscious automatic perspective? We then have cognitive processing, and this is essentially how we use those cognitive structures to inform how we process information. So how do those core, uh, core beliefs interact with what's going on in the social world? How do we compartmentalize them? How do we prioritize them potentially um, when we have competing kind of task demands um, to make sense of what's going on and to start to formulate potential uh, behavioral responses to a particular situation? And then we have cognitive products, and these are the outcomes of our cognitive processing. These can be our behaviours, but they're also our kind of explicitly expressed attitudes as well. So we have cognitive structures uh, forming kind of a key part of our identity in terms of how do we view ourselves, referred to typically as implicit beliefs or implicit attitudes, um, but also um, you might refer to them as schemas. So if you've done work on schemas before in terms of mental scripts and shortcuts, um, that would be how you conceptualize a cognitive structure. Uh, then we have uh, cognitive processing being fed that information from the cognitive structures. And the really key idea behind cognitive processing is um, the availability of cognitive resource. So we have this idea of cognitive load. If we have lots of things that are going on, then it might be more difficult for us to make a decision or to maybe override some of our core beliefs. And then as a result of that cognitive processing, we have some kind of cognitive product, which is like I've said before, our explicit beliefs or our behaviors. Now what we're gonna be doing in the uh, next few videos is going through each of these uh, three parts of social cognitive theory in a lot more detail, thinking about what they represent, what some of the science is on these three parts of social cognition, um, and then starting to apply them to uh, criminal behaviour and criminal action more generally.